Hello and welcome everyone to the information session of uh, Management Development Program from Imperial College. My name is Rudolf Rudi Fala. I'll be a moderator today. And together with me, we have Penny Hoffman Becking. She's the program director for this program. So you will hear a lot more from her, uh, learning about whether this program is the right one for you. And once again, this is Management Development Program from Imperial. So but before we get there, we'd like to know a little bit more about you. So if you can put this uh, comment in the chat, which is where are you connecting from, that would be great. Also, if you have any questions during the session, please put them in the Q&A. So I'm just going to wait them for a few more seconds. Where are you connecting from? And of course, the most popular answer will be probably London. Uh, you can also say Kensington if you want, uh, but uh, curious to know because uh, we generally have a very international crowd. Yes, we do have uh, Singapore. We have Nigeria in the house. All right, that's great. Okay, anybody else? Don't be shy. This is meant to be an interactive session. All right, we've got India in the house. And yes, we've got one London in the house for now. All right, I'll wait a few more seconds and then we get going. All right, a couple of other people are trying to join. All right, we got Zambia in the house. Wonderful. All right. So we've got UK or Singapore originally in the, from the UK, Bernard says. And then we have Nigeria, India, London, Zambia, and Kelly from the UK as well. All right, wonderful. So welcome. And uh, here is Penny. Uh, so she can say hello. All right, there you go. So you will hear from Penny uh, talking about the program in a second. Yeah, sorry, Penny. All right, so I work with Emeritus. Emeritus works with Imperial to deliver this program to you. So uh, my name is Rudolf Ruri, as you said, and as you saw. All right, and then Mohammed from Egypt also joined as well. So brilliant. So here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to tell you a little bit more about Imperial College Business School Executive Education. And we're going to talk about this program, of course. We give you an overview. We give you the key takeaways. Uh, Penny will talk about curriculum in more detail. But we'll talk also about who is it for, if there are any prerequisites or not, how the day-to-day -day experience of this program looks like. Um, how can that fit with your career goals, uh, whether you can do it while you are uh, working full time, which you, by the way, you can. And then uh, who are the other colleagues of Penny that uh, de de developed this program and will be part of it because there will be recorded lessons and there will be live sessions as well. It's a 25 week program. We'll talk about it in more detail. At the end of that, I would highly recommend, not everybody wants a, certi a certificate, but I would highly recommend to do the required work, the assignments, and you will get the digital certificate that uh, you can showcase on your LinkedIn profile or in your CV, resume. And uh, if you you know tag your colleagues there, of course, they will help you to get the word out that you have done all this tremendous work on this program. And you learn so much, uh, by the way, right? So... Uh, at the end of the session, we'll give you two options. Uh, if you want to register, uh, you will get, be given a link to register. And uh, if you have more questions, you can also have a one-on-one -on -one session with one of our advisors. So we'll have a plenty of time for Q&A at the end. But during the session, don't hesitate and put the questions in the Q&A anyway. And uh, we can also stop at the suitable time and uh, address them there. So we can do it both ways. But first and foremost, uh, many of you are from the UK, maybe you pass on by South Kensington Station, so you know where the Imperial College is. Uh, you probably recognize the building uh, behind uh, our, you know, behind us in the background, right, and where Penny is based. Uh, but uh, most importantly, for somebody who probably doesn't know it very, very well, uh, it is a top-ranked university according to QS World University Rankings 2025, and I think yeah, you can read the description on the slide yourself, but the three key words I would like you to remember, and that is the business, technology, and entrepreneurship. So this is what we say in the first paragraph. It's a fusion of business, technology, and entrepreneurship. So this school is very, very practical. It's very hands-on and has a strong affinity for technology and entrepreneurship. And you will see it throughout the description of this program as well. Uh, very clearly um, demonstrated. So once again, this is something that you will see in this program in particular, right? It's called Management Development Program. 
However, uh, what does that mean these days, right? It means that you uh, need to learn from thought leaders, uh, such as faculty, but also practitioners and industry experts, which is what you will get here. You will also have plenty of uh, uh, stimulus so that you can um, work on the, uh, the concept that I mentioned before. This is a fusion of business, entrepreneurship, and technology, because many of the things these days are technology-led. Technology is just means to an end. Uh, it's not the end itself, but uh, we will cover that in this program as well. But also, uh, at the end of the day, if you are a senior leader and you are a leader by definition, and as uh, you heard in that word, you need to have a holistic approach uh, to management, but also to your development and to development of your teams. And uh, therefore, this uh, curriculum of this program uh, spans five key pillars. And the first one is people leadership. Second one is an analytics for business managers. It's tough to do or make any decisions these days without data, without analytics. Um, obviously, um, whether you are uh, close to marketing department or not, this is something that you should uh, definitely spend some time on. And same goes for not always popular accounting and finance. Um, and all of this is, lead, uh, is linked to strategic management and problem solving. So these will be the five pillars of this program. So once again, um, why these five pillars, right? And uh, here you see some stats. Um, only 48% of the people uh, or managers agree that they have the skills to excel at their jobs these days. And at the same time, the HR managers think that 82% of the managers agree that um, they are not um, equipped to lead change. So what does that mean? Uh, when you talk about profitability, you talk about business, you talk about numbers, but at the same time, the skills gap is here. And also, uh, in particular, it has to do with leadership and uh, leadership skills and change management as well. So all of this is, is embedded in this program. And now we start to talk about something more concrete. What does that mean, this program, right? So this is 25 weeks online. It's exclusively exclusively delivered online. And it's we think that it would take you four to six hours per week. And uh, what you will get here is flexible online learning experience. First and foremost, what does that mean? Sometimes people call it asynchronous learning. So the lectures are recorded in advance uh, and you can watch them whenever it suits you. They will be released on a weekly basis. You can watch them before work, during work, uh, you know, at lunchtime or uh, on the weekend, whenever it suits you. However, that's not just a you know, bunch of videos and you left on your, to your own devices. You will have 25 live sessions throughout the program. Uh, where you can interact with faculty, program leaders, or facilitators, and industry professionals. Uh, you will be obviously given a full schedule and details uh, later on. If you cannot make those lesson, uh, lectures, or rather sessions, interactive sessions, they will be recorded, and uh, generally you also get the slides as well. At the same time, uh, because it's an executive program, you will be able to network with one another. And for this, we have a discussion forum. Uh, we will facilitate networking opportunities and you will be able to exchange ideas and, and experiences uh, or experience with each other as well. And all of this is not a theoretical, right? I think to be uh, theoretical when it comes to leadership management uh, and management development, that would be pretty uh, challenging. So uh, this, all of this will be combined with hands-on activities. And of course, they will be graded assignments. Uh, we'll talk about this a little bit, but uh, the idea is that um, we are looking for some demonstration of effort, some original thinking, but uh, we are not going back to elementary school and uh, competing for grades, right? There is no distinction here. It's really uh, pass fail and that's all. So Pavi says, are these networking events in person or online? I didn't talk about events in particular, networking opportunities, uh, which are all uh, done around the program, which is delivered online. So everything will be online. However, uh, of course, if you are based in the same city, uh, you will be uh, welcome to meet in person as well. Um, this discussion forums will enable you to uh, 
recognize each other and also there will be a way to connect with each other you can also meet in person voluntarily but um, we'll do everything online so everybody's treated fairly it doesn't matter whether you're based in in india or in london or in zambia uh, everybody will have the same experience so the key takeaways um, I think from the first bullet point, I would say the uh, key word, which is holistic, right? Um, you need to take decisions, yes, uh, as a leader, as a manager, but uh, from a holistic perspective, because you're not only a marketing manager, but you are a general manager. So that means you need to take into an account finance, accounting, and marketing perspectives. At the same time, you need to be able to lead diverse teams. You need to uh, work uh, with your stakeholders. You need to um, be aware of diversity needs and also the benefits for you and your company. What does that mean? Diverse leadership. Generally, to me, it means diversity of thought. Uh, because if you are, especially, for instance, a startup or you're developing a new product, you're probably not developing it for yourself, right? So that's why it's good to work with people who are different from you and can give you uh, feedback on those uh, products and services. And all of this is related to decisions, right? You as a leader needs to need to take decisions. And uh, uh, we will emphasize here that they will be uh, linked to data. They will be linked to analytics. And all of this is enabled by technology and innovation, right? At the same time, however, we live on this planet for now, and hopefully for a longer period of time than uh, you know this 25 weeks. So therefore, we need to also look into sustainability topics and see how this is embedded to your strategic goals and to your leadership um, objectives. And one last thing, all of this is related to the strategy of your company and, um, and how to uh, deliver what uh, you want for your customers. Now, one last thing before I let Penny to talk about curriculum in more detail is who is this for, right? And uh, we can hear from Penny as well, some further examples as needed. Uh, first of all, aspiring managers or leaders, right? So if you think that you're going to move up in the ladder or you would like to, this will give you a holistic view, uh, holistic knowledge outside of the stress of day-to-day -day, uh, circumstances and hopefully prepare you for the next step in your career because um, very often we are put in the boxes and we are specialists. And uh, when you get promoted, then uh, all of a sudden you realize, as in that survey, that you may not have the skills for the current level of the job and you need to learn on the job. Many people succeed doing that that way. But uh, it's if nothing else, it's much easier if you are, if you are aware of what is uh, coming next. Um, so you may be also a newly appointed manager that already is happening to you. You have a new responsibilities. And also, you may be a seasoned um, professional or manager, but you think that there may be some gaps in your knowledge as well. So once once again, uh, before we talk about curriculum, please also don't hesitate, put the questions in the Q&A, and we will answer those uh, during the session or towards the end as well. But what you will get is the cutting edge content. Um, so a lot of the faculty that uh, teaches at the Imperial are obviously great researchers and academics, but they also work with practitioners. So that is linked to that second, um, you know, second pictogram in front of you, which is industry insights. So you will get the research, you'll get the industry insights. All of this actually creates the cutting edge content in my view. And uh, you will be able to co collaborate with others. That's one way to do networking. So we're not talking about a networking, uh, you know, drinks on a Thursday, but more through uh, working together. Uh, we will talk more about capstone projects, so that will be your final project as well. And all of this is going to um, be uh, linking to your building your network. This is also how you uh, move up in the world or move to another organization. And uh, you can use the digital certificate of completion to signal people all the work you put in. So, Penny, uh, happy to hear from you now. Thank you very much, Rudy. Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, so I'm your program director for this um, um, MDP, um, and I perhaps I'll say a little bit more about myself and my background and the other faculty in a moment, but perhaps it's useful to know that I also oversee Imperial College's online global MBA, um, and so I have a lot of experience with delivering learning via uh, asynchronous and via this platform. 
Um, and I find it works extremely well. So, and it's really great to see all of the locations that you're dialing in from. That's very reminiscent of the tutorials that I run with our global MBA students. So I think just to say that we have a considerable depth of experience in delivering in, um, learning in this way. And I think our students um, bear witness to the fact that it's extremely effective and enables them to continue with their jobs while actually um, getting a qualification which they, they really value. So when we were putting this together with Emeritus, we thought quite carefully about um, how to best use your time, since you're all doing lots of other things as well. Um, and so these are the five modules that we picked. And we, we wanted to kick off really with a module that was going to focus on you, um, which I think is universally applicable to everybody, which is all about leadership. What does it mean to be a leader? Um, what does it mean to be a leader um, in the current age? What are some of the challenges that, that we're facing around, for example, conflict? Or how do you motivate people? What, what makes people tick? So Sankalp will take you through five modules all around your leadership practice. And this is really aimed, we're trying to keep this as practical and useful as possible. Um, so yes, of course, this is all based on um, research and theory. But you will find in each of the weeks that there are things that you can start to use straight away that we we feel will be useful to you. So by the end of the first module, the leadership module, you should have been given the opportunity to reflect a little bit on your own uh, leadership style, on some of the challenges you face in your specific environment and learn some techniques and some tools that will be helpful to you as you step up and take on more and more leadership responsibility. And we recognize that you will all be at different stages in that journey. And I, I think that that bears out. So I was just greeting our new crop of um, MBA students uh, last week at a dinner. And I think their age range was from 25 to uh, around 55. So, you know, a wide range, but they all managed to find something valuable. So we're going to kick off with leadership. And then we have three modules which are really much more uh, functional. So some of you will, for example, be finance professionals, perhaps some of you are skilled in analytics. So what we tend to find with these modules is that there are different levels of capability within the cohort. And sometimes you can learn from one another. Um, and I would say one of the things about the platform, this is not just a sort of an on-demand learning platform, it's a virtual classroom, so you will be able to interact with one another and see one another's responses in the platform. Um, it's kind of a virtual classroom environment. So the first thing uh, to talk about is analytics. Um, as I said, some of you may feel very comfortable with what's happening, data analytics, AI, all of the sort of new technologies around that. But I mean, I would count myself as somebody who perhaps, even though I have a technical background, is perhaps not quite up to date. And here we really benefited Imperial from being a uh, technical university as well as a business university. And so we have um, a colleague from the Department of Computing who's going to take you through a crash course in analytics, essentially. Um, and again, we're not trying to give you the sort of background that we would give our computer science graduates. We're trying to teach you some really practical uh, concepts and tools that we think will will stand you in good stead in the coming weeks and years, um, which is which is bang up to date. So a little bit about what analytics is about, how you use predictive analytics, some stuff about machine learning and how that works, the process of optimization. So how do you run optimization and how can you manage uh, prescriptive analytics? So that's a sort of five week crash course in, in becoming really comfortable with data analytics and the sorts of um, processes and sorts of information that you can actually access now through using some of these tools. And then you'll look at marketing. So marketing is really everything to do with how you interface with your customers. It's the top line of your business and it doesn't really matter what type of organization you work within, there will be some users or customers of your business. Oh, great, this is what happens when I sit still, my lights go out. Let me just see if I can get them to go on again. Come on, lights. Yeah, there you are, that's sustainability in action. We're keeping the, uh, keeping the bills low by making sure the lights go out if we don't move. Um, so marketing, you will learn, um, Daniel has a very practitioner lens on all of this and he is an absolute expert in digital marketing. 
of course, marketing has been transformed by many of the digital tools and platforms that are around now. So he'll take you through some of the more strategic thinking, so how you create personas, how you understand your customer requirements, but it'll also take you through how you can use some of the tools to actually measure your marketing, how you can run marketing campaigns, um, how you can generate insights from the enormous quantity of data and information that you can now access on customers. So a really useful kind of view of how to, how to move the top line for your business. And then we'll move on to talk about accounting and finance. Um, this is an area where some of you will be skilled and others will go, oh, but it's really important as you move up through the organization to be able to interpret and read financial statements, to know what a balance sheet means, to understand some of the key ratios. So we'll look at some of the um, financial statements, financial analysis, how you can understand the health of a business, how you can really interrogate what's going on using the numbers. And we'll also have um, one of our team talk to you about corporate finance, so funding a business, how you uh, manage um, capital requirements and so on and so forth. So you'll get a really good, broad overview of finance, and hopefully that will demystify that whole topic for any of you that perhaps have stayed away from the number side of the business up until now. And then at the end, um, you'll meet me and we're going to talk a bit about strategic management and strategic problem solving. Um, so what we want you to get out of this really is be able to sort of helicopter up and think about a business holistically, think about strategic direction, think about how a business or an organization achieves some sort of competitive advantage. Um, we'll also look at the role of sustainability around how businesses think of themselves will look at change and disruption and how that impacts businesses and how businesses can respond to that and then in the final week we give you a really practical session on a sort of problem solving toolkit so how to approach um, problem solving from a very strategic um, but very practical perspective and that comes from my background in management consultancy so it's a sort of toolkit that you'll find that consultants use. And then right at the end, we will give you a capstone project. I think I've got a slide in, the, in a moment to tell us a bit more about that. The idea being to link everything that you've learned to something that you're grappling with in your own work context. So we will ask you to apply or draw on what you've learned over the five um, modules to actually uh, tackle a problem that you face within your own environment and to bring all of the threads together. Um, so we, we want to, as I said, it to be as practical as possible. So here we go. Here's the capstone project. Thank you very much, Rudy. Um, so it's it, you can you can focus uh, on one area more than the others, but the idea is that you bring all those strands together um, to tackle something. Perhaps there's a change going on in your organization. Perhaps there's some new technology coming in. Perhaps your organization is changing. Perhaps you're looking to move into uh, new products or access new customers. How do you bring all this together? How do you build the leadership? How do you build user analytics? How do you use your marketing knowledge and your understanding of the financial health of the business to really um, step up and think about things strategically? So that's the capstone project comes right at the end. Um, we also are aware of the fact that you will probably come to this content during your working day or after your working day. So we try to make it as engaging, as interesting, as practical as possible. One of the ways that we do that is to bring what we believe are really interesting cases from industry into, uh, into the module. Some of these companies will be very familiar to you uh, internationally, perhaps some less. I think Marvel is pretty well known worldwide. Marks and Spencer's perhaps a little bit uh, more of a UK thing. But what we do is we bring concepts to you and then we will illustrate those using uh, case studies. So mini case studies, not going to get you to read tons and tons of stuff. So, for example, um, Marvel Entertainment uh, was bankrupt in 1986. It was basically a comic company that had pretty much gone out of business. And it's now the uh, most successful entertainment franchise of all time. I would be very surprised if any of you have not heard at least of, of something from Marvel. I had uh, two teenage kids at home with me during lockdown, so I watched a lot of Marvel movies. Um, and we look at what it is about the way that they uh, organize themselves and what they've done to actually enable to transform. And we believe that by looking at some of those cases, you can perhaps understand some of the concepts that we're bringing to you and find ways of making those applicable to your own work concept. Perhaps, perhaps uh, Marvel is, is, is a bit of a stretch, but we hope that they will all be interesting. So you can see some of the companies that we will talk about um, up on that slide.
one of my favourites is MS's Colin the Caterpillar uh, court case against Aldi uh, Cuthbert the Caterpillar. But more of that when you when you do the course. So let me say something about the faculty, and Rudy always already alluded to this. Uh, we're very aware that you are busy working professionals, and so we want this to be super practical. And so almost all of the, uh, well, we've got a good mix, I would say, from the faculty team of people who have um, cutting edge research experience with people who have practical industry experience. So let me just talk a little bit about my own background. Um, I've actually been teaching at the business school for the last five years or so, but actually I spent 25 years prior to joining um, the faculty in business. So I worked in marketing and then in management consultancy for about 25 years. So my approach to teaching strategy is very much sure it's built on the theoretical foundations. We try and find some of the latest research and some of the latest ideas but I also have a sense of what's useful, what works, what's interesting, what you can apply. Um, and so that's how we try to, um, to pitch what we're going to cover with you. Um, Sankalp, Sankalp will teach you about leadership. And at the same time, Sankalp is one of our leaders in the business school. He's an associate dean. Um, he looks a lot at um, practices around mindfulness, about inclusion. Um, he's our associate dean, as I said, around EDI but he's also a leader himself. So he understands live some of the issues that no doubt some of you are facing as well. So that's Sankalp. And then we have Calvin Tsai, who's from the Department of Computing, as I mentioned. Um, I can't tell you too much about that area. It's a little bit beyond my capability, but he, um, he, he researches in this area and is a very um, engaging individual and will definitely um, give you a safe pair of hands to guide you through data analytics and machine learning. Uh, moving on then we have uh, Daniel Rowles. Daniel Rowles will teach you about marketing. Daniel is not only an excellent teacher, but he's also a practitioner. He advises many companies on digital marketing. Um, he's part of the Institute of Marketing in the UK. So he's um, very, very active and is very aware of all of the, the latest things that are going on in that part of the industry. Um, Yolanda will teach you about um, financial accounting or financial and management accounting. Uh, Yolanda also worked as a management consultant prior to joining the business school. I think she's been with the business school about 10 years, perhaps a bit longer than I have, and teaches um, financial accounting, management accounting to a lot of our MBA students, so very, very experienced. And Claudia, Claudia will teach you corporate finance, so much more of the sort of... Um, uh, funding of a business and how you um, manage your capital structure and so on and so forth and is also involved in a number of European uh, bodies so has contacts outside of the business school as well as uh, researching around the corporate finance area. So we hope that uh, you get a good mixture of, of people teaching you, you get a good range of different voices, different personalities. Goes without saying, we're from all over the, the world, so um, lots of different nationalities. I'm British, Daniel's British, but I think everybody else, Yolanda's Dutch, Claudia's Portuguese. Um, so we, we, we feel very international here at the business school. So um, hopefully that also gives you uh, a diverse number of perspectives. So, uh, Rudy, Rudy, I think I just hand back to you. Um... Yes, yes. Uh, thank you, Penny. Great, great stuff. Uh, I think uh, it should be much, much clearer. But there are some questions here already in the Q and A. So I think the, uh, I'll focus on the ones for you. Uh, Kelly is asking, how much does this program focus on strategic planning? So we don't talk about how to write a strategic plan specifically, but you're going to talk about some of the sort of financial pieces of that in the finance module. And then I will talk to you about how you conceive of a strategy and what should be in a strategy. So what we won't teach you to do is sort of with soup to nuts of how do you write a strategic plan, but we'll teach you some of the numbers behind it. And then we'll teach you some of the approaches you can take as you formulate strategy. So we believe that you will have a good basis for writing strategic plan in whatever manner your organization does that. Yes. Great stuff. I hope that's clear. If you have any follow up questions, please put them in the Q&A, of course. Um, also, um, Himanshu is asking, it's another question for you. I would say he says, well, is this the right program for folks coming from the IT technical background, software ar ar architecture, solution design, aspiring for a leadership role? If yes, can you tell, tell us more about that? 
Yeah, hi, Manshu. So I would say absolutely. So, I mean, I can speak to how this works for our MBAs. We very often get people who have had a, um, a vertical career within, for example, IT, and now they're looking to take a more generalist role. And that's exactly the, the cohort that we're, we're looking to speak to. So some of you maybe come from the finance route or from the engineering route. But the idea here is that you will get a really good sense of what it means to deliver a marketing program or to understand how the finance department works, which means that as you move into that more generalist role, you feel much more confident about how you interact with those departments and how you can manage those departments. And then the strategic piece at the end should bring that all a little bit together for you and give you perhaps a slightly sort of more um, helicopter perspective of the organization. So I would say absolutely, it would it would suit you. And you probably will find Calvin's section a little bit easier than some of the other participants. Perfect, great. So yes, uh, if you can put your questions in the Q&A, we'll get to it in a second. Uh, so you don't need to put it in the chat as well. It's all good. Um, so first, uh, Catherine and Anomus, I think there are two related questions. What are requirements to earn a certificate if we have any exams and how capstones are evaluated and feedback provided? So what you will do is uh, if you go through, for instance, curriculum that uh, Penny was talking about, for each of those weeks, you will have some sort of an assignment to do, right? Uh, however, as I said, uh, they won't be grading in a sense one to five or five to one or, you know, uh, A, B, C, D, et cetera, but it will be more pass fail, whether it's complete or not. And uh, we'll focus on some evidence of effort that went into this, some thought that went into this, some, uh, you know, originality that uh, was demonstrated, right? So this is a course for executive management. So we don't want you to chase grades necessarily, but there will have to be some effort to be put in on a weekly basis. However, that doesn't mean that you need to do 25 of those each and every week to complete there will be some passing uh, minimum to uh, to be discussed. Uh, I don't have the exact percentage right now, but uh, you know, bear uh, trust trust me that this will be reasonable uh, as long as you will put together uh, put in four to six hours a week, right? So we said four to six hours a week of effort. Uh, some of those uh, assignments will be a must uh, so that you get the certificate. Others could be optional, but each and every week there will be an assignment to do, that's for sure. Also, at the end, you will have the capstone that already Penny talked about, as you see here again. So this will be the biggest part of your grade, right? Uh, you will get the feedback on this as long as you submit, submit it on time, but uh, this will be the largest part of your grade. This is the most important thing because here you will put together everything you learned into one place and it will be hands-on uh, hands-on experience uh, as much as possible. Um, you know, we can draw in inspiration from some of these cases, from live discussions, from networking, all of that, right? All of this then will lead to a certificate of completion. It's fully digital, um, not only because we say we live by technology here, but also because it's envisaged that someone might be doing a background check on you. And then uh, this certificate, it will not be just the PDF that uh, nobody can verify. This is already envisaged that somebody will want to ch uh, check the authenticity of this. Uh, so this is already for background checks as well. Um, now, when it comes to program fees, uh, program fees around 3,000 uh, pounds. We will talk about it in a second. There are no scholarships available, but we will help you if you uh, are uh, asking your employer, for example, uh, to uh, finance it. We will give you all the support you need to get this approved uh, when it comes to information and things like this. And we can also talk about financing uh, opportunities or possibilities in a moment. Uh, but let me come back to some other questions that are here. Uh, so we also talked about the uh, Imperial Management Development Program being a great fit for professionals in IT or IT professionals that want to move up in the ladder, as Penny said. And uh, Non Tokozo is asking, to what extent does the course allow for live interaction with lecturers and colleagues? Also, is this course relevant for people working in development work in Africa? So it's a mixture of recorded uh, content and live sessions. Um, but these live ses sessions will take in a group setting, right? So you will be told when they happen. Uh, you will be given invitations where you, you know, where you might... <laughs> 
uh, well in advance. And uh, worst case scenario, if you cannot make them, uh, then they will be recorded. Uh, but uh, you will be told, uh, you know, months in advance when they happen, you will get the reminder the day before, the one one or two hours before as well, and the recording as well. So that's the best way to interact with faculty or with your learning facilitators, with your peers. The other way to do it is and to interact with your peers is to use the discussion forum. I know it sounds like a cliche, but the more you put in, the more you get out of it. So people, uh, sh you know, share their examples from their experience related to the content, related to the case studies. They share their thoughts. The facilitator will review this. They will moderate it and they can bring it up on the, uh, you know, during the live sessions as well. So. That's another way to network. Uh, I also understood from the chat there will be a networking session in particular as well, which will also happen online. And uh, you will be welcome to set up a LinkedIn group outside of the course, plat course platform and use it as a virtual Rolodex later. But uh, frankly, you might not need this because you will be able to contact, contact your uh, peers that are okay to be contacted for one year from the start from the program. You will have a, an access to the course website so you can find each other there um, so Himanshu is asking how many extra hours needs to be put into cope with after four to six hours of course of content every week so four to six hours is everything um, so if there is more then please let us know but that's our estimate so Shall I also this just is a, yeah go for it Speak to um so not to God so I was asking also about is it relevant for people working in development work in Africa yes. I think you have to take a view on that. I would say we do have a lot of students from Africa that take the global MBA and they get a lot out of it, I would say. Um, I guess it depends on what your interest is. But if you're interested in, in, in moving up and taking more general view, then I would think that that would absolutely be relevant to you. And being in Africa, you have the additional advantage that the time zone difference to London, depending on where you are in Africa, is generally quite manageable. So, um, yes, I, we have lots of African students that, that do our MBAs and I think get a lot out of it. And um Perhaps you'll you'll have a little cohort um, which you can exchange ideas with. So yes, definitely. Um, and then the other question I saw, I think somebody asked about how we evaluate the capstone, and um, I think Rudy's also already sort of slightly addressed that by saying, you know, we're looking for you to um, apply what you've learned to your own situation. It's not a kind of a grade evaluation, it's a pass fail, and there will be detailed evaluation criteria within the module. I can't remember exactly what they are, but it will be something like, have you demonstrated that you've applied some of what you've learned? Um, have you sort of written about something interesting that clearly links to your own experience? Um, we're, we're trying to give you um, the opportunity to demonstrate that you've actually met the learning objectives. That's what that's all about. Right. And also, when you talk about development work in general, uh, maybe sometimes uh, people ask, uh, well, what if I don't work in for profit sector? Right. So I work in an NGO. Can I apply there? So maybe that's another uh, tweak on that question. So, Penny, what are your comments on that? Uh, does this work for people in NGO, in uh, government yes. yeah. uh, policy, et cetera? I would absolutely say so. So, if you think about um, uh, sort of finance numbers that that applies I think pretty much to any organization uh, if you think about leadership that's absolutely applies to any organization even marketing marketing although it sounds as if it's a sort of for-profit um, thing if you think about working in the charity sector or the NGO sector you have users you have constituents you're trying to help the the, the discipline about trying to organize your messaging think about your proposition I think is incredibly powerful in that sector as well having worked myself in the not-for-profit sector, in the charity sector, I would say that's extremely helpful. Uh, strategy, again, it's it's a generic discipline. I think it can apply, well, it you know, strategy started in the military area, but it absolutely applies to organizations beyond the for-profit area. So yes, and da data, data analytics similarly. So I would say, no, there's, there's plenty, whether or not you're working in a for-profit organization, I would say that you'll find that almost all of the content makes sense in, in those contexts too, yes. Absolutely. Great. Great to hear. Um, also, we have a question about when will the evaluations be done? Uh, as I said, there will be weekly assignments. So you will need to complete those assignments by the end of that week. Uh, week could be Tuesday to Tuesday or something like this. But in any case, it will be seven days. By the end of that week, you should finish your assignment. And then you get the feedback within uh, within a week or so. But the capstone is the capstone, it's the final project. So you will do that at the end of the program. So you will also get the feedback within a week or so 
after you submit it and that submission will be actually the end of the program, yes. All right, so if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate, put them in the Q&A. All right, um, so as we are um, coming to the end of our slides, but we still can uh, take any questions you might have, here is the recap, right? So this is a 25 week learning journey. Uh, you will have a faculty that is a mixture of truly academics and researchers and practitioners. Uh, it's a school that is uh, well renowned. It's a uh, number one ranked by QS uh, in Europe, and it's well renowned for what? For a fusion of entrepreneurship management, uh, entrepreneurship technology, and um, and that is what we're going to talk about here as well. So, um, all right, I see here. Don Tocoso is asking if the slides will be shared with us. Yes, absolutely. If you're registered for this, you'll get the recording and you will get the slides. Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, once again, uh, coming to the recap as well, um, faculty uh, is great. It's pr uh, practitioners, right? It's, uh, it's about technology and entrepreneurship and management. And we talk about leadership as well as uh, you know, that works with a technology led um, efforts or strategies. Now, what are the next steps? You have two options. So you were also asking, or already asking about program fee. So 3,500. 3, if you register today, you will get the discount of 100. But uh, there are two options here. So if you are clear on that, you know, this works for you, you can apply online. So that's the first QR code or uh, the one on the top. You can click on the links as well in the chat and you can go ahead, register and off you go and you start very soon. Or if you still have questions, you can scan the QR code on the bottom, right? And you can schedule a call uh, with an advisor and you can have a one-on-one -on -one discussion as well. So two options, either it's all crystal clear, you can go ahead and uh, get the discount and, rec and uh, register today. Or if you need a bit more time, you can also do that and have a one-on-one -on -one discussion as well. So Himanch is asking about other sessions. Uh, later in the year, there will be other sessions, uh, but we don't know exact dates yet. Right, so once again, if you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A. Perhaps so, just two uh, more things to mention. Um, cases of interest so one one thing that we were at pains to do as we were putting this together was to come up with some very practical things that you can take each week so sort of personal effectiveness so we found as as our students are moving into more leadership roles you know time management comes an issue stakeholder management comes an issue so you'll find that there are things distributed through the program which are designed to be things you can pick up and start using straight away um, so that you start to see some benefit as quickly as possible. So that's one thing. And the other thing to say is you won't see any module that specifically talks about sustainability um, or triple bottom line. It's woven into the way we teach our modules. That's the philosophy that we like to adopt at Imperial, that actually uh, grand challenges, be they around sustainability or technology change, are part of the DNA of how we do things. And so you will find that those topics are part of uh, how we teach the topics that are involved in the, in the module. Great. So one other question about financing. You see it also here on this page. We offer flexible payment options. You can pay in installments. Uh, you can talk to your advisor about that as well. But in general, uh, you will, if you register now, you get the £100 discount and then you can choose also flexible uh, payments uh, plan. Um, so I think that's, uh, that's another way uh, to do it as well. Bernard's asking, uh, how old is this program? Would Penny consider this a program a mini MBA in terms of a module, in terms of overlap in, uh, of content? What percentage is the overlap between MDP and MBA? Okay, wow. There's lots of questions in there, Bernard. Thank you for that. So how old is this program? This program is brand new. It's literally brand new. We've been, just been creating it over the last few months. So it's, it's bang up to date. All of the content is really up to date and we will obviously continue to update it. In fact, um, yeah, but one of the part, one of the sections in my in my section, I'm already thinking, oh, you know, they've actually moved on a little bit. So there are lots of companies that are that are in the news a lot. Um, in terms of, is it a mini MBA? Well, yes, yes, I guess it is. I mean, it covers 
some of the same modules that you'd find in an MBA. So um, the modules in here are exactly the same modules that you would find in an MBA. The difference is just the, the level of detail that you can go to, obviously with four to six hours a week over 25 weeks our just for comparison our global online MBA is roughly 10 hours a week over two years so yes you will some of the content is very similar to the content that we would include with our MBAs but we try to keep it at a level which is actually manageable within the four to six hours over the period that you have but uh, I think the intent is the same so in terms of percentage I guess you could do the maths in terms of the hours that might be it but but I would say that there's nothing in here that we wouldn't expect our MBA students to be covering in in the in the online MBA that we offer so I hope that answers your question great and Himanch is also asking or he's saying I'm an aspiring global MBA online from Imperial College will this course be considered in my selection process I think it's not formally um, sort of like a requirement, but of course it would be it would be a positive indicator. Absolutely, yes. If you've already got a certificate from an MDP from Imperial, um, so it wouldn't it wouldn't credit you towards a global MBA, but it would certainly help. And and it, apart from anything else, Manchu, it gives you a very good sense of what it would like to do a global MBA at Imperial. So maybe it's a, it's a great way of trying out how this style of learning works and how you feel about the the instructors that you meet on the program so yeah i think it would help but it's not a formal kind of um uh credit if you like on the mba all right great stuff any other questions please Okay, want you? All right. So once again, management development program, holistic view for aspiring managers, recently promoted managers. It's a global program. It works for private sector, but also public sector. Uh, and you will learn a lot more about not only strategy, but uh, people management, business analytics, finance and accounting and marketing. So in that sense, as Penny said, it's kind of like an a mini MBA, but uh, fewer hours and shorter program, right? It's 25 weeks, four to six hours a week, we think. You have a link again in the chat where you can uh, click on the registration page, uh, or you can schedule an advisor uh, meeting with an advisor. You can have a chat 101. In any case, you'll get the slides uh, for, for this and you will get the recording. And I think it might be also on Emeritus channel on YouTube at some point. All right, let's see. All right, so Mohammed says it's all clear. Thanks, uh, waiting for, to start the journey. It's same for us. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, see you in the program. But Penny, any final words from you? Just it would be wonderful to welcome you and thank you all for coming today. I hope that we've been able to answer some of your questions and give you a flavor of what it might be all about. But um, but do do ask if you want to speak to an advisor and I look forward to welcoming you in a in a couple of weeks time, I hope. All right, then some of you already uh, oh. some of you already registered. So that's great. And great. Uh, maybe one last question. All right, Iman should go for it. Let's see. So once again, you have links to apply or schedule a follow-up call in the chat. Or if you're watching this from a recording, you can just pull up your phone and uh, scan the QR code. It will lead you to the right place as well. You see it. Um, okay. All right. So Himanshu says, I'm on tour. want to delay my session until November 9th. Is that possible to manage? Uh, as I said, uh, this particular cohort will start very, very soon, but uh, there will be other ones. We don't know exactly when. So just keep an eye on it on emeritus.org slash imperial, and you will find the next available dates after that. Uh, or, of course, if you register for this, you can also uh, talk to an advisor and talk to them in more detail about the scheduling uh, challenges you might have, and they can find out find a way how to remind you when the upcoming cohort is available. All right. So thank you so much. All right. So thank you once again, uh, Penny. Thank you, everyone, for great, great questions.
and uh, hope to see you in the program. Um, this uh, is brand new. Uh, it is essential. It's needed. And uh, you see, you have a wonderful program director already uh, on board. So uh, what, what can go wrong, right? Uh, so see you there. Thanks. See you again. See you.